Loy Allen now making a move. He'll work to the outside of some traffic. He is still a goodly distance back, but now working his way up to 10th on the leaderboard. Allen has picked up some drafting help. Loy Allen, that is, along with Bill Venturini there. Tim Steele has fallen in line, and Bob Strait as well. That forced some works through the corner off turn number two. Again, they've moved up to the 10th position. And down the back straightaway, a challenge for the lead. Jeff McClure dives to the inside. Tim Fidoa will try and go with him underneath Jeff Purvis. Purvis takes it up to the top of the banking. Fidoa dust is off Mike Wallace. Now Fidoa works on Purvis's car. Purvis hung out to dry on the outside all by himself. Jeff McClure leads back to the stripe. Tell you what, these young ARCA drivers have really put on a good display here this afternoon of some driving skill and having developed all this experience over the recent years as they work back into turn number one, the front four continue to link up in a tight draft. Tim Fidoa has been very impressive. I asked him yesterday, do you have the experience to stay up in that lead draft? Well, you know, here I don't have a lot of seat time, but but I feel real a lot more comfortable after running a full uh, year on the Bush Series. You know, that experience is, is something that is hard to come by, and I think after a year there and, and uh, a few of these ARCA shows, we're, we're, I think we are ready to run. He's having a great run here this afternoon. He currently is posted up there in second place as we're looking at the halfway mark coming up here in about four more circuits around. 36 laps complete in the ARCA 200. Trouble we'll on right the back, back straight away. One car upside down. Two cars colliding. The car skidding across the infield grass. Barrel rolling five, six, seven times, vaulting up into the air and coming down in pieces along the ground. Two cars involved. Mark Thompson's car, the one barrel rolling end over end. The other machine that's involved is uh, now come to rest about halfway down the back straightaway, that being the car of Michael Dawkin, the Clearwater, Florida driver. A vicious crash on the back stretch. That car tumbled perhaps seven or eight times, end over end, side over side, and bounces way out on the apron of the racetrack right in the middle of the back stretch. Joe Moore, you've got to look at it over there also. Yeah, Thompson was coming off the corner. You could see the back end come loose. He almost lost it and tried to pull it back in. It started sliding sideways. It looked like maybe it would be just a, an innocent slide across the grass here, but suddenly the air hit it wrong. The car went up in the air and, as you said, went over six or seven times before finally landing about halfway down this back straightaway. How that all began off of turn number two, Dawkins' car hit the outside wall. The car just went right when he came off the corner like it was pushing and he couldn't get it to turn. And when he bounced off the wall, he then came back across the racetrack and hit Thompson's car. When Thompson got sideways, the car got up in the air and began the series of flips into the grass. Quickly, let's go to the back stretch uh, for an update from Alan Bestwick. Barney, Michael Dawkin climbed from his car and walked to the uh, ambulance for the trip to the infield care center. The uh, Thompson car, the Mark Thompson machine, is completely surrounded by safety personnel. All of the sheet metal was gone from the car, and they are all over the machine now working with him, and uh, he is still inside the car being attended to by the safety workers. And just about the half the entire front of the field has elected to go on to pit road for a quick update. Jim Phillips. 